you mentioned uh, the internships and, and you had a successful process where you, you actually landed a job, a full-time job after the internship. For, for those SNCs listening in, obviously that's not always the case, but what do you think looking back now, what were some things that put you in good stead to, for the club to invest in you for, for your first full-time contract? Yeah, I guess I was quite lucky when I took that opportunity at Leicester Tigers. I, I was very clear that that's what I wanted to do. And I, and I actually think that's um, as part of the internship process. If you actually do a period of time and you realize maybe this isn't the profession for me or I'm more interested in another aspect of, uh, you know, performance, be it analytics or video analysis or whatever it is, that that's part of the process too. Uh, but I was very clear about what I wanted to do. And I think I'd accumulated a, quite a bit of experience in the amateur setting and so I had practiced my coaching a fair bit and then I had enough exposure in professional environments not to add technical knowledge in an elite environment but probably more to understand how to behave and interact in, in that environment mm -hmm. so I was uh, I was quite aware that I probably wasn't going to walk in for those who might not be aware Leicester Tigers is what well, is the most successful team in in UK rugby they're a 11 time premiership champions and twice European cup winners so it's a, it's a very established program um, I was pretty conscious that I probably wasn't going to walk in there and be solving performance problems for the for for the department there. But what I could do was was provide physical work and uh, you know do what was required to help the program run smoothly. Those other internships that you did for for those to get a better understanding on how much time you put in to get to that point that mm. led to success of full contract. What would be like a typical week um, while you were doing your in internships? Yeah, the dynamic of internships has, has changed significantly, I guess, since when I did it like that internship at Leicester Tigers was pretty much 12 months full time, which was kind of the, you know, for no pay, minimal pay. Wow. Um, yeah, I think the dynamic of that has obviously changed in, you know, in recent years, um, which is probably for the better. Um, the, the was that through that it, the club or through university? That was through the club, what they did through, because I sought that internship out myself independently, but um Bath Uni at the time did a placement placement opportunities there and then I was coming from Loughborough which is another uh, established sports science uni um, and had some experience so I kind of was knocking on doors looking for internship opportunities at the at the time I, and I definitely think that shift from um, that full-time internship model I think that's pretty much dead now but there's no doubt that that accumulating time in the saddle and accumulating experiences yeah. is, is what helps you so I would probably encourage anyone who's starting out there that it doesn't necessarily have to be in a professional elite environment, but certainly logging time, making mistakes, learning from mistakes is, uh, you know, is, is necessary to, to be able to contribute to a performance department at the highest level. And for the developing SNCs listening in that dropping that height um, drill, do you have uh, technical ability? Do you help on the field with, with contact prep and, and, and ta tackle technique? Yeah, look, I think that's the I think that's the gold standard is you know general training and then more specific athletic performance training and then finally tying it into a more contextual scenario. So um, yep. uh, we we might do uh, we'll obviously do some work in our you know in the gym prep wise around flexibility mobility uh, maybe some coordination based exercises which tax that ability to drop body height and be strong at low positions. And then we might go outside and have a you know have a, a drill focused around. Um, uh, perturbations at low body heights and then they might go straight into one of the technical coaches and do a you know do a ground ball situation so you're trying to tie in some of those physical development aspects with the, with the technical action what about with the coaching with the prep work with the with the coordination drills do you and dan break the group up in half and and so you've got more eyes on them in that sense or is it do you do it all at once like you mentioned the, the power of the group <laughs> No, I guess we, uh, what we try and do is, I guess what we term coaching heavy and coach light. And we, uh, we try and have either days or portions of the training, which are quite coach intensive, where they're real technical components that we want them to improve on and therefore require, you know, plenty of eyes on, or we have components of training where we're happy to leave them go. And that might look like their upper body strength training. I don't think too many of our blokes need, need coaching at the minute on, you know, bench pressing and bench pulls or not too much queuing on um trap our deadlifts but something like our plyometric work or coordination based training uh, etc i think needs to be quite heavily coached so we try and period periodize that um and i guess the way we try and solve that program is or that problem is we'll start every strength and power session with a rotation of 
hip conditioning, flexibility, mobility, uh, their trunk work and a coordination element. And they'll basically work a little circuit there at the start, which is coached quite heavy. For SNCs listening in that are managing a program and maybe going through that current experience right now, what were what what would be your review process? And then how would you, with more experience now, how do, how do you manage it? Um, I guess better than, than at the beginning where you're, you're dealing with these these hard decisions and then also being able to communicate with the coach. Yeah, well, I think the important thing is you know, that uh, ideally you want to be making as many of those mistakes as you can if you're a young practitioner in the amateur environment, you know, where it's, it's no, it's not a positive experience anywhere, but when the consequences are a little bit less, that's where you want to be learning, maybe, you know, trialing things, making mistakes and then learning from them. I think um, if you are in the pro environment, what I learned from that is to be, yeah, I, I think the skill set has been considerate of how you impact the holistic program and that's uh, mm -hmm. and having, an under, having an understanding of that. And that's not, that's, I hope this doesn't sound like it's, a case of being conservative with prescriptions that's not the case because it's just understanding when's the time to push when's the time to maybe consolidate and um, who are the individuals that we need to maybe look after this week or um, who are the individuals individuals that we need to push to make them greater chance of being selected in the team in four or five six weeks time 